I want to introduce Tom Matlack, our keynote speaker this morning. Tom's been a very, very good friend to the Inn. He's someone who's helped make much of our work possible. He's co-founder of the Good Men Project, an online magazine offering information on what it means to be a man in today's world. And a lot of you will hear similar themes when Tom starts to talk to you, because I know Kathy Conley and Nick, and I know they talk to you guys, especially the men, about these things all the time. Um, but Tom, the focus of Tom's work has really been what it means to be a man in today's world, a good father, a good son, a good husband, a good friend, and a good coworker. He has appeared on national and local television and radio, as well as print across the country. In 2009, Tom led, I think, the very first non-conventional book tour of his book uh, called the, the Good Men Essays. Uh, the book tour started inside the Sing Sing Correctional Facility um, out in California. Uh, ended in Hollywood with a screening of the Good Men Project documentary. Tom's going to share some insights about, the, about his work um, and what it means to be a good man, but also a good human being. Thanks, Tom. Good morning. It's a true honor to be here with all of you, especially the folks in the first three rows. Uh, President Downey, uh, Board of Directors, Pine Street staff, graduates of the Pine Street Inn Training Program, graduates, of, uh, graduates with permanent housing, family members, and honored guests. Today I want to talk about success. We know a lot about failure. I know a lot about failure, and I know some of you do too. In fact, failure is pretty much all we hear about in the news these days, murder, financial misdeeds, even a congressman putting his manhood on Twitter and lying about it. <laughs> but success, success is actually a much harder thing to define than failure. I want to ask each of the graduates and each of the people in the audience to think for a moment about how you personally define success in your life. To be honest, I've always had a very, very, very hard time defining success for myself. I've always been confused about it. So in recent years, I've tried to find people I felt had succeeded in some profound way and borrowed their definition for a while. They're what I call my heroes, my life heroes. When I was thinking about talking to all of you on this topic, a line kept coming back to me from the big book in Alcoholics Anonymous. It's from the passage that they call The Promises, where it talks about the rewards of staying sober as an alcoholic. The line I've always loved and defines a kind of success in my life is you will intuitively know how to handle situations which used to baffle us. It seems to me that part of success has to do with overcoming adversity, with coming to an understanding of who you really are, with growing up and experiencing something I would call grace, that miracle when you have literally no idea how something happened, but it did, and, you, and you're absolutely sure it's a good thing. I think our culture too often defines success in a way that just doesn't work. It's inauthentic at best and leads to disaster at worst. At worst. We live in a culture that tells us it's what you have, not who you are, that really counts. There are many, many examples of people who have succeeded on, pa on paper to a huge degree. Tiger, Arnold, Charlie Sheen, but utterly failed in their lives. That's the central paradox of life. You usually have to fail utterly and completely in order to succeed. Success, it turns out, is an inside job. I know you all know that. You can pretend it's not, but at the end, you're going to fall on your face. I personally know. There was a day not long ago that I appeared on the front page of the Wall Street Journal for having taken a very large company public and then selling it 90 days later for two billion dollars. That very same week I found myself in my car in a church parking lot with nothing but the clothes on my back alone with the crushing knowledge that I really hadn't succeeded at all despite what was written in the newspaper headlines. I'd failed miserably as a father and as a husband. You see I was a drunk. I called my mom from that church, church parking lot and then my grandmother. My grandmother's words at that most desperate hour were, 
It's not how you fail in life, it's how you pick yourself up. And for the last 15 years, that's what I've tried to do. Back then, I had a six-month-old son whose name was Seamus and a two-year-old daughter named Carrie. I'd never lived with them full time, but I dedicated myself to being the best father I possibly could be. I got sober, I stayed sober, and I tried the best I could to show up for my life. After doing my very best with my kids on my own for five years, I met the woman of my dreams. On my sixth sober anniversary, which was December 28, 2002, I married my current wife, Elena. Then on Valentine's Day 2005, Elena and I had our third child, Cole. Carrie, my daughter who was two when I got sober, is now 17. Seamus, uh, who was just six months old, is now 15, and Elena and our child, Cole, Cole is six. Elena and I have been married eight years, and I've been sober going on 15. I'd hate to call myself a success, but suffice it to say that I have a lot to be grateful for. But I can still feel that, feel that utter despair sitting in that church parking lot like it was yesterday. And I, never, I hope I never forget where it is I came from. You graduates know that as well as anyone, that to succeed in this world, you have to go through the shadow of death, that moment of truth when you're looking in the mirror and have no idea who is looking back at you. That moment when you have to ask yourself, what happened to me? Who am I? Is this life worth living? It might be the death of a child, the loss of a job, or the gradual corroding effect of addiction. But as they say in the big book of AA, the result will be nil until you let go absolutely. It's that letting go of the outside stuff and working from the inside out that's the key to, honest, to an honest and successful and happy life. In my travels, I'm constantly looking for heroes, men and women who have the guts to walk through the shadow of death. You can just see it in their eyes. One of my heroes, as the president mentioned, is a guy who spent 15 years inside Sing Sing turning his, before he turned his life around. Another risked his life taking pictures of the war in Iraq. Another is an NFL Hall of Famer who used karate to keep himself grounded. I learned important lessons from each of my heroes that I carry with me each and every day. I want to say that each and every one of you are heroes to me. That's why I'm here. You inspire me to keep going on my journey, even though not every day is easy. Some are, in fact, still really hard. But please, as you leave, remember, no matter how much you might accumulate in the days ahead, that success is an inside job and involves your soul, not your car or your house. In my view, you have already defined success in your own lives by being here today. For me and everyone else here who has had the pr privilege of witnessing this ceremony, Congratulations and thank you. Thank you for sharing this day and your success with me.